Welcome back everybody. I have such an exciting topic today and it's so important. When you are working on your kitchen design or your remodel, you have to learn how to choose the right kitchen sink for your project. And there's a couple of different things I want to talk to you guys about. One is kitchen materials or kitchen sink materials. And the other one is sink styles because there's a couple of different ones in each category. And on top of that, I'm going to go through some of the mistakes most people make or don't think about when they commit to a certain sink as some sinks just need different kind of installation or weight requirements. Okay. So make sure to watch all the way to the end so we can go through that and you don't make any costly mistakes on your remodel. And really quick, before we get started, guys, if you're watching this channel, you're probably into designing and remodeling your own kitchen or helping others with their project. So make sure to subscribe as I talk about nothing else but kitchen design, remodeling, tips and tricks, and all that good stuff, and all the questions you guys have. So again, if you come up with anything that I didn't talk about yet, make sure to leave that in the comments below, and feel, feel free to share this video with anybody you know that might be working on their own kitchen. Now let's dive right in. Guys, my name is Kasten Kopp, kitchen designer and owner of King's Kitchen, your favorite kitchen designer, I hope so, in the Pacific Northwest and also cabinet supplier. And we're gonna add our Instagram handle right here. Make sure to follow us on Instagram as well. I'm very sorry about all the back noise. That is my dog whining, he wants out. <laughs> um, but make sure to follow us on Instagram as well as we have really cool inspiration and reels that we're doing on our Instagram page. All right, now let's talk about sinks. So sinks and faucets are really considered an appliance in your kitchen. And when you think about your day-to-day -day work that you do in your kitchen, like seriously think about how often you actually use the sink and the faucet. Like people will spend thousands on a really good range. And I understand that if you're really good, you know, you want to cook and you're really into cooking, but also think about how many times are you using that kitchen sink and faucet? I remember when I talked to my plumbing supplier, maybe last year, and we, we thought about that question. It was like, oh my God, like you use your sink and faucet like all the time, constantly on, off, washing hands really quick. That's the only thing I'm doing really quick. Like, you know, it's you, you really want to make sure that you select, especially a kitchen sink and faucet, that has good quality, so they're going to last you. And the thing about the sink versus the faucet, a faucet is pretty easy to swap out, even you know a year down the road, maybe two years down the road, if you don't like it, or you went with like a lesser quality model to save on your budget. But a kitchen sink is going to be a lot more difficult to swap out, so really invest into a good kitchen sink. Now, when it comes to choosing the right kitchen sink for your project, there's really two things you want to think about. And one is the sink material. So we have a couple of different ones that I'll walk you through. And then the sink style, okay? So we'll talk about all of that. Now, let's start with kitchen sink materials. The most commonly used kitchen sink material is stainless steel and probably because of the fact that stainless steel sinks are on kind of the affordability scale, the most affordable ones and just the most commonly used ones. So a lot of people, they might have always had a stainless kitchen sink in, um, you know, where they grew up or first apartments or first homes. So a lot of people just keep going that route. Now, when you think about stainless steel sinks, most of them come in different strengths um, and that's the gauge. So the lower the gauge, the stronger the material. And a lot of, let's say, stock home builders or spec home builders, they will use like lesser quality materials. So you'll end up with like a 18 gauge kitchen sink, like a stainless steel sink. And when I work with clients, I usually always recommend a minimum of 16 gauge. And then you can go 14 and you know, even more, but like 14 is considered more industrial. So I think 16 gauge is a really good commitment for stainless steel. Another thing about stainless steel is yes, it's affordable, but also it can scratch a lot more. So that's just one main downside of stainless steel. It will scratch like don't even get mad if it scratches like that's just part of it right but a cool thing you can do to help prevent scratching in a stainless steel sink is to just simply get a grid a sink grid as shown in this picture and what it will do is just prevent items from hitting the bottom of your sink and scratching them but also it will help with not creating 
kind of watermarks on your bottom because you're sitting, let's say a coffee cup up on the grid, it can fully dry out underneath. So it really helps with the longevity of your sink. And I highly recommend purchasing any kind of stainless, stainless steel sink these days with a sink grid. Next on our list are porcelain sinks, those beautiful white sinks that you have in mind. And a lot of times it's a porcelain sink. A lot of people like the white porcelain sinks um, for farmhouse kitchen sinks or also called apron front sinks. And really porcelain is a porcelain enameled steel sink. So it is heavier than steel, but most people like porcelain because it's kind of like the perfect weight. It's between the stainless steel and the fire clay with the fire clay being super happy heavy so why like a lot of times white porcelain sinks um the pro about this kind of material is you don't have no scratching you don't have no denting no scratching um you don't have no staining is another one the main con like the negative about this sink is that it is prone to chipping so you know and it's all about how you handle your sink if you are careful let's say you are hand washing big pots and pans especially like a cast iron pan just be careful on not dropping heavy items into your sink because it's not just going to chip by dropping a fork in it's it's really those heavy uh, cast iron items so just be careful when you are hand washing and using your porcelain sink on the other hand porcelain sinks are also more expensive on the overall scale compared to your average stainless steel sink. Okay. Next on the list are our fire clay sinks. And this is also another version that people love, especially when they're trying to go the farmhouse direction, right? Now the fire clay on kind of the, the weight scale is the most, is like one of the heavier ones, right? It's heavier than porcelain, definitely heavier than stainless steel. And it is made from a blend of clay and glaze and it is extremely durable. So what people say here is, it's kind of funny, it's kind of backwards from the porcelain sink. The fire clay is so durable that you don't really are afraid about chipping, but you're more afraid that if you set maybe a plate into the sink too fast that the plate could break. So super durable, highly scratch resistant, highly stain resistant, and highly heat resistant, which is another cool feature of the fire clay. Um, on the affordability scale, definitely on the higher version, you know, and even after the porcelain sink. Uh, so definitely um, a little bit of a higher ticket item when you're working on your budget. Next on the list, we have our quartz composite sinks and some people also call these granite composite sinks, but it's really made out of a combination with quartz. And we all know we love quartz because it is super durable and it is no maintenance. And it's really funny because I grew up in Germany and in the house that I grew up in, we had a quartz composite sink and that was years ago. I mean, I'm not trying to reveal my real age here, but <laughs> it was like years ago. And we're just now starting to see more and more US manufacturers bringing quartz composite sinks on the market. Um, I love quartz composite sinks because you can also choose a lot more colors these days. I We have a black, matte black quartz composite sinks in one of the displays in our showroom, which I love. And you can get pretty much any sink style these days that you like. There are a lot of positives about quartz. Again, super um, high quality. It is heat resistant, scratch resistant, dent resistant. It won't chip because the material itself, it just won't chip. So a lot of pros about this material. There's hardly a negative about this. I, I'd say invest into a good brand so you don't ever get scratches, but really high quality brands um, say that they are scratch resistant. And also just like the stainless steel sink, you can buy these sinks with a sink grid. And just in general, I think a sink grid is just super like antibacterial because you're letting the sink dry out. And um, the only other con or negative I can think about about a com composite sink would really just be that it's a little bit higher um, cost than your average stainless steel, but I've been looking online and the sinks that I've used in the past are not crazy. So I, I definitely would consider a composite sink and I have been working with a lot of clients going the composite sink route. And last on our list for sink materials is a copper sink. And a copper sink also super heavy, super durable. The cool thing is it's a naturally antibacterial material 
And I think that most people really choose a copper sink because of you know, the overall style of the kitchen. Like we're really trying to create something that wants that copper in there. It's not just an average kitchen and somebody goes with a copper sink. Um, a big thing to know about a copper sink is, of course, it's highly resistant to heat, scratching, denting, things like that. But it is also, it creates a natural patina over time, almost like marble. So when you go with a copper sink, just know that there is a little bit more maintenance involved in a copper sink. Otherwise, it is stunning. And I've worked with copper sinks in the past, especially for farmhouse applications, and I, it turned out stunning. Just know that there's a little bit more maintenance involved, and it's also very heavy and kind of on the affordability scale that you're, you're starting to creep up really high, okay? So if you're trying to be budget friendly, maybe not go copper, but um, you know it all depends on the style you're going for. Now, before we move on to the different sink styles, now we're done with the materials, but the sink styles, make sure to drop a comment below. What is your favorite material and what are you going with and kind of why, I'd love to know. Okay, let's talk about the different sink styles, okay? Now, sink styles, you have the first one is really the drop-in sink versus the undermount sink. One gets dropped in from the top on your countertop, one gets installed underneath your countertop. A really important thing to know is that if you are choosing an undermounted sink, you can't do that with every material. Most undermount sinks, you cannot do this with every countertop because the material just won't allow for it, especially laminate, because you have like just exposed wood uh, in between it. A lot of times it's not even like real plywood, it's just a composite board. So when using an undermounted sink you have to make sure your material that you're using for your countertops will work for this and that's usually natural stone uh, or quartz okay these are the most known materials you use an undermounted sink with and another thing to know is that when you are collecting let's say an estimate for countertops make sure to let everybody know that you're doing an undermounted sink because there is an additional charge for that kind of cutout because the shop has to additionally edge fabricate the exposed edge around the sink. Now, when you're doing a drop-in sink, especially on, let's say, wood countertops, butcher block countertops, then the cutout for the sink is just a little bit simpler and doesn't cost as much. And I would like to add a note that a lot of really quality wood top manufacturers, for example, Grothaus, you guys know I did a review with them and I love them. I'm using them right now on another project. Love their wood countertops. And they actually have a, I think it's a patented top coat or something like that, but it's a lifetime warranty finish like on top of their countertops, on their wood countertops that will allow for an undermounted sink. And it's really cool. Sorry, all my emails are popping in. It's like 8 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> we're busy. Um, but it's really cool that you have the ability even with a wood butcher block or something like that to do an undermounted sink. So just keep that in mind. I also want to add on to the fact that if you're doing an undermounted sink, you if you previously, in, let's say you're doing a remodel, so you had your kitchen in place, you go, you're going from a drop-in sink, which is sitting already about one and a half inches higher than the new sink undermounted, and new sinks are usually deeper than the old sinks, you are kind of going lower with your sink underneath the sink base cabinet. So keep in mind that there is a really high chance of your plumber having to lower the plumbing underneath to make it all fit, okay? So that's just one of the things, a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't need extra plumbing, oh, we'll just connect it in the end ourselves, but there is that change in height there, and I see a lot of kitchens where a plumber just has to come in and just readjust the, the plumbing stack underneath. And also what happens is if you don't get your plumber's opinion on that beforehand, there's a really high chance that after the fact everything is installed, now your plumber has to kind of butcher the back of your cabinet and cut it out more to lower your plumbing. And that's never nice. I'm always about like having a really nice cutout. Obviously it doesn't always work 100%, but just keep that in mind, okay? And then a very common sink style is a single bowl versus dual bowls. And a lot of people have been wanting to go single bowl because you can just fit big pots. I mean, some people are fitting their dogs in the sink and washing them, but like you can just fit like huge pots in there and wash them with such ease. 
and then you also have the dual bowls and there's still a lot of people who prefer a dual bowl and there's either a 50 50 for two equal bowls or you can have for example a 70 30 or flip-flopped for one bowl is bigger than the other one a newer style that i think is very cool is when you have a dual bowl but the center divider is not the full height it's like a half height and especially if you're doing things like on thawing meat and i sometimes do that for my dogs then you can still have the ability of fill up that one lower side just enough to cover, let's say, meat that you're trying to unfreeze versus having to fill in the entire bowl. So that's a cool style and it's kind of newer and I've worked with them in the past and it's really nice. And last but not least, probably the one that everybody's been waiting for is a standard sink versus a farmhouse sink. And some people also call the farmhouse sink a apron front sink. The number one thing you have to remember is that an apron front sink, you have to let your cabinet people know that you're doing a farmhouse sink. This is not something after the cabinets have been delivered, you can say, hey, I'm doing a farmhouse sink because that top falls front, that needs to be cut out. And when you're doing really nicer cabinets like semi-custom cabinets you guys know i work with belmont a lot if we're doing semi-custom cabinets with the newer sink styles and especially the newer farmhouse sinks those heights differ so i sometimes can't just use the standard let's say nine or ten inches that i have on that false top drawer front i might have to adjust this and make this taller so the panel on the front needs to be taller so the sink will sit and sit completely flush with the top of your cabinets. So it's super important that you let your cabinet person know that you're doing a farmhouse sink. Also, one big difference about installing a farmhouse sink, usually if you do a standard sink, you don't have it in place, you just have it on site, cabinets are installed, your countertop people come and template, they want to measure the sink. With a farmhouse sink, it's the only sink that your cabinet installer actually has to set it in place where it needs to be prior to your countertop template. So make sure you're letting your cabinet supplier know and make sure you're letting your cabinet installer know because he already has to set it in place, okay? Otherwise your, camp your template technician will show up and then you will leave again and tell you your farmhouse sink is not set and then you might have to pay a trip charge, okay? So I'm just trying to help you to avoid that. All right, this was it. Just a short, quick, fun video on helping you to choose the right kitchen sink for your kitchen remodel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave any kind of comments or questions below. Make sure to like this video and also subscribe to my channel. I try to uh, bring you guys new topics and inspiration of, on a weekly basis every Friday. And if there's anything else that I haven't touched on in one of my videos, make sure to leave that below. I'd love to make sure I hit all of the topics or questions that you guys have so we can all learn from each other about kitchen design and remodeling. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.